Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night o'er oh, the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming was still there oh who say does that star spangled banner get away <laughs> or oh, the land of Bless you for song. We haven't heard it in so long. Class of 2021, plus or minus 0.5. We truly, truly rejoice to see this day arrive for you and for the many who love you, those whom we see and those whose dear and loving presence we feel. Join me for the invocation. Wedge a sweet silence, a quiet between the many words that will be spoken. May we be truly attentive, mindful of all that we celebrate, grateful for all we receive and have received as recipients of these, our first degrees. Blessed by memories, the difficult and the sweet, Joyful for this time, fueled in purpose and hope, awake to our gifts and our conviction. Keeper of all our days, this day long awaited is not what we envisioned or imagined in simpler times that were less burdened by fear and loss. Unseen we hold dearest, family and friends, near classmates at our side, those with whom we weathered so much, precious companions who yearn with us for much that cannot, could not be. Grief and celebration, such strange and yet respected companions, today we know them both for ourselves and for many. We hold in special care neighbors, family, in India and in South America, where suffering and worry is immense. We seek to hold this urgency for the world's moment in focus as we have tried to hold our own. Even as we look around and see the garb of commencement and the day's celebration, and we pause, truly pause, to know gratitude, even joy, for this amazing day and all who made it possible. The arc of all there is to know, to do, 
to be in this moment is so wide and asks a great deal. We do give mourning deep space and we seek to see it and to hold it for our families, our communities, our nation and the world, even in our beloved class, as we hold in our hearts a radiant classmate, Max Lanai, whose death much too soon only magnifies his bright dearness to us and to his family, a dearness that will never dim his place in this class ever true. Burdening the months of pandemic and fears and harm, violent contours of black, Asian, and Sikh racism that clouded our nation, solidarity and recommitment are clearly required. A challenge bequeathed to these, the youngest leaders emerging, requires that we honor them as we rededicate ourselves to the transformative work of anti-racism. Even as we admire them and are grateful for the strident, insistent activism that the young have used to animate us all. May we together ensure that these continue to breathe fully in our courtrooms, at our borders, in our hearts. Radiant Brunonian graduates about to be infused and nourished with heart, learning and capacity gleaned in laboratories, at keyboards, in prayer, and in engagement. See and build great beauty as you go forth. May memories of the midnight strains of the Hutching Vodi, the coxswain's cry at dawn on the Seekonk River, the magic of a, a cappella arch sings spoken word and drums on the green, College Hill's springtime blaze of daffodils, dogwoods, and magnolias, the inches and miles of Brunonia's halls, these streets, these fields, these books, these labs, these faces. May they be ever present to nourish flagging spirits or weary hearts. May their clarity never dim, even as they soften. Infuse with hope the sweetness of these years to animate our deepest commitments, to engage the privilege of our education with conscience, to gift the precision of intellect with the warmest conviction of souls, to engage the work of research, that work that quickly created life-saving vaccines, with the public health imagination and ingenuity to ensure that it reaches all those in deepest need. May these, the beloved about to graduate, find the portals of their hearts swung wide to animate the words of critique with lived equity. May this generation's voice rise and resound with the radically essential call to rescue the future of this planet and all of its people. Rising generations of Brunonians, class of 2021.5 and minus 0.5, Prove the aspirations of this Brown's Charter. Discharge the offices of life with usefulness and reputation. Seek worthy work. Build loving lives of purpose on foundations of justice and loving kindness. May your blessings and joy abound ever true. May we all be a blessing in the life of the world you love, this day and always. Amen. You may be seated. By the authority vested in me by the Charter of Brown University and the Board of Fellows of the Corporation, I hereby declare the 253rd commencement of Brown University convened. And we'll begin with the senior orations. The first oration titled Dare to Dream will be given by George Kofahi.
Today, I stand before you to tell you the story of a boy who dared to dream. The product of a small village love story, molded from birth by the realities of growing up in an impoverished village, stamped a fatherless black boy as an infant and handed the weight of social challenges that come with the label. Drawn by the mirage of the land of opportunity and filtered through the broken US immigration system. Taught to never wear a hoodie and keep his hands where they can be seen at all times, lest the wrong move leave him laying on a sidewalk. Forced to sit on the hard, cold mahogany benches of the US court system, and there he watches his mother plead not to be deported back to a country that washed the murderers of her husband walk free. He's told to celebrate as his mother is sentenced to three months in prison because at least it's not deportation. Teachers tell him to work hard so he can pull himself up by the bootstraps. His city celebrates. He's a local exemplar for earning a scholarship to the Ivy League. It's a place where faces like his are scarce. He's forced to work twice as hard to bridge the gap of public school education in a world where wealth buys opportunity. And today, he's allowed to wield an engineering degree from an Ivy League institution and can be grateful because things like this don't happen to people like him. At this point in the story, I'll tell you that this little boy is me, but not so that we can delight in a black success story or hold on to the hope that a rose can grow out of concrete, but rather to urge us to dream, to dream of a world where black success is not an anomaly, where the story of black success is not overcoming excruciating odds at every turn. I urge us to dream of a world where immigrant mothers do not have to give up their dreams to support their children or give up their children. Where black death is not reduced to an Instagram story repost where deportation is not a weapon that our government uses to threaten black and brown people. A world where your household income does not determine the quality of education that you can receive. I'm dreaming of challenging the very systems that allow us to see black success as exceptional and not normal. We can dream together of a brown university where African-American faces are not an oddity, where we can walk into a classroom and not be victimized by imposter syndrome. We can dream together of a school system in which you cannot count the number of black and brown professors that you've had on one hand. Dream of equity dream of change, and dream of a more inclusive future. There's a power in dreaming because it cannot be taken from us. This world can strip us of our rights, our humanity, our autonomy, but even it cannot take away our ability to dream. So let dreaming be our intimate act of resistance. Dare to dream before you've seen the mountain move, before the skies have cleared, before you have a clear plan. No matter how many times they tell you that it cannot be done, dream, immigrant child. Dream, black girl. Dream, black boy. Dream, all of you who are wondering when things will change. Dream, all of you who are fighting generational trauma. Dream, you who lost your father. 
Dream, you aspiring politician. Dream, future doctor. Dream, writer. Dream, artist. Dream, class of 2021. Our dreams will usher change into this world because our lives depend on them. Eleanor Roosevelt once said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So today, class of 2021, I ask you, what are your dreams? What keeps you awake at night? What areas must we all see change in before we bring another generation into this world? What areas of our neighborhoods can we not walk by without feeling both angered and galvanized? As we enter into a world that is full of brokenness and inequality, I urge us to hold on to these dreams, to let them guide us when we are lost and without direction when the mountain of hopelessness seems too large to overcome, when questions like, what's the point, begin to plague our minds, and when the wheel of change seems far too slow for us. For those moments, I remind us of the little girl who, who dreams to be in the seats that we are all in today but this country has already told her no on the basis of her skin. Or the children who don't have the luxury of dreaming because they've been given cage floors instead of beds. When we feel hopeless, I say again, dare to dream, class of 2021. We will be the ones who will dream of the better world that will come to be. The ones that will take those dreams and work to see them come to fruition. So I'll leave you with the question, 2021. What will this world look like? Because you have chosen to dream. Thank you. The second oration, titled From Problems to Progress, The Power of Problem Solving, will be given by Siddhi Nagkarni. Good morning, class of 2021. Woo! Yes, we need some energy. All right. <laughs> when we dreamed about our brown journey and where it would take us, I don't think anyone imagined a moment quite like this. College was hard enough before adding a global pandemic to the mix. It was hard before we had to disperse to places around the world and say goodbye to our friends. We tried our best to uphold a sense of normalcy through our schoolwork. Many of us simultaneously juggled the additional responsibilities that come with being home or suddenly alone. For me, focusing on my microbiology Zoom lectures was hard with a mysterious microbiological agent just outside. I feared for the health of my parents 
as they worked bravely to protect the health of others. They can't be here in person today, but their love and constant belief in me are what have gotten me to this place. So excited to be speaking with all of you. Let's go back in time before we got to Brown. I was recently digging through the old folders in my laptop to find my college essays. There was a lot of cringing, a lot. But I had to smile when I read my Why Brown essay. I wrote that I wanted to be a part of a community of individuals unafraid to pursue their dreams. I'll be the first to admit that it may sound cheesy, but I still believe it. The part that I want us to focus on today is the idea of being unafraid to pursue our dreams. I guess the question of what are your dreams is just another way of asking, what do you want to be when you grow up? But I don't like that question. What does growing up even mean? When will we know when we've grown up? And doesn't this question seem to imply that we can only choose one thing? Given how indecisive I am, that's a horrifying concept to me. I'm drawn to a different question. When I'm at home, we all come together at 6 p.m. to watch the nightly news on PBS. One evening, an interview came on with Jaime Kassap, Google's former education evangelist. He explained, when I grow up, I don't ask, when I, when I talk to students, I don't ask them what they want to be when they grow up. I ask, what problems do you want to solve? I like this question because it shifts the framework from an egocentric narrative to one that asks what we can do for others. And even better, it doesn't require growing up. It makes me proud to know that you, my peers in the class of 2021, have already begun to tackle this question. With every petition, protest, and Zoom meeting, we are reimagining the ways that systems can work. It takes tremendous courage to question the systems that we've grown up with, taken for granted, and benefited from. Yet, this is exactly what so many of you have already done. Our classmates have taught me that the privileges of this education and opportunities are not to be stored away for later use. The time to use our voices and our collective power to make change is now. We have the opportunity to set an example for how we want society to be rather than settle complacently for what is. You, my classmates, jumped in to solve problems as soon as we got to Brown. We were so new to everything, but despite it all, you worked alongside the classes before us to advocate for our community. I'm still inspired by the movement we witnessed to bring air conditioning into the RADI, co-led by dining workers and students. These efforts help to improve the conditions for all of us, and especially for the people who work so hard to not only feed us every day, but to make us feel at home. Whether it was through a warm greeting at the entrance from Gail, or having a laugh with Jose when he switched our IDs with the unassuming student behind us in line, these are the people who make this place so special. And these relationships extend well beyond the Van Wickle gates. Our classmates have shown us how to care for and learn from the Providence community. Perhaps most importantly, our class took care of each other when absolutely nothing was certain. Despite the pandemic, we have risen to challenges with compassion. We relied on the strength that comes from knowing that community care is possible. We persevered because we advocated for each other, and that gave us hope. To my classmates who are fighting to hold the school we love accountable, both locally and globally, thank you. To my classmates who are building a national platform to end sexual violence at Brown and around the country, thank you. To my classmates who are using their voices to shed light on racial injustice, especially in the wake of the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Dante Wright, Micaiah Bryan, and many others, thank you. 
to my classmates who are raising awareness about violence against Asian Americans in our own community and beyond, thank you. And finally, a big thank you to all of my classmates. Whether you spent the last few years in the CIT, Watson, Biomed, or the List Art Building, we all have the courage to use our education and curiosity to propel us into the next stage of our lives. Inside and outside of the classroom, we have learned to think critically about how we can use our knowledge to benefit others. Time and time again, you always show up, and that makes all the difference. I know it's time for us to leave this magical place that feels safe and supportive for so many of us. We're entering a world of uncertainty, and that can be frightening. But we don't need to be scared. The experiences that we've had at Brown have prepared us for this moment. The lessons our professors have instilled in us and the endless support of our families, both the ones we grew up with and the ones we've created here, will carry us forward. Of course, there will be setbacks, and yes, the world is full of problems. But as we have shown here over the past few years, we are problem solvers. We just need to figure out what problems we want to solve next. So let's get started. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you to both of our student orator orators. They were amazing. No university is greater than its faculty. At commencement, we recognize new professors, associate professors, and senior lecturers, and faculty members who are retiring after distinguished service. So please give, a, give a applause to your faculty, your professors. The Board of Fellows has granted the degree of Master of Arts ad eundem to those professors, associate professors, and senior lecturers who hold no other Brown degree to the end that their names may be carried upon the rolls of the university as honorary alumni. So candidates for the Masters of Arts ad eundem, please listen. You're probably listening virtually. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the Master of Arts degree ad eundem and I grant to you all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree. Videte igatur u probe integrequa in emolumentum rei publicae et in dei honorum ut decet eos hoc gradu honoratos vos geratus. See to it, therefore, that you conduct yourselves properly and with integrity to the betterment of the Republic and to the honor of God as befits those honored with this degree. Good morning. Now I ask my faculty colleagues who are retiring this year and becoming professors emeriti to listen and be applauded. We salute you and thank you for your many years of service. Thanks. I now call upon the chair of the faculty, Professor Johanna Hannock, to present the Susan Culver Rosenberger Medal of Honor. The Rosenberger Medal is bestowed from time to time by the Brown University faculty to recognize individuals who have made especially notable or beneficial achievements. Julie Adams Strandberg, with gratitude for your presence at Brown for over five decades, the Brown University faculty awards you the Susan Culver Rosenberger Medal of Honor. 
It is only under exceptional circumstances that the Rosenberger Medal has been awarded to persons still actively engaged in the affairs of Brown University. It is your work as teacher, artist, scholar, and your ongoing engagement with the community that rises to the level of exceptional. For over 50 years, you have epitomized the mission of Brown University and remained an example of individuality, exploration, and integration of knowledge across disciplines. You have provided students with meaningful, formative, and influential experiences, and they have carried those lessons into all walks of life. In 1969, the same year as the open curriculum was established, you founded the Brown Dance Program in the Women's Physical Education Department of Pembroke College. Now, over five decades later, Brown boasts a sizable dance faculty, an expanded dance curriculum, and a dance track within the Department of Theater Arts and Performance Studies. All of this has grown from the seed that you planted a half century ago and have cultivated and tended ever since. Your devotion to rigor and excellence, your communication, empathy, and your pivotal role in elevating the arts as a whole at Brown have earned the highest honor that the faculty can bestow. Congratulations. Vincent Moore, for your essential role in adding a new dimension to Brown University, one that has and will continue to improve the public welfare, the Brown University faculty awards you the highest honor it can bestow, the Susan Culver Rosenberger Medal of Honor. Having arrived at Brown in 1981, you are known for the stunning impact of your service, leadership, and research at this university not only on its graduate and undergraduate public health training and research programs, but also on Brown's reputation nationally and internationally. You have been described as a tireless advocate for vulnerable elders, as prolific, effective, and joyous in the pursuit of better care for older Americans. Your contributions to Brown, development of undergraduate and graduate educational programs, undergraduate teaching, graduate student mentoring, recruiting and supporting postdocs and junior faculty, launching new academic apartments, envisioning and helping to launch a school of public health are accomplishment enough. However, the professional success has always been matched or perhaps even eclipsed by the lasting impact recounted through so many personal anecdotes about an act of kindness, about generosity with your time as a colleague and mentor, about your infectious enthusiasm, and commitment to instilling others with the confidence to succeed. In a year that has nurtured a deeper understanding of public health and appreciation for its practitioners, it is especially appropriate to present you with this award. With admiration and gratitude, the Brown University faculty presents you with the Rosenberger Medal. It is our acknowledgement of your dedication to scholarship, your devotion to individuals, and to the public good. Congratulations. Kandidoti Honorandi Nunc Vadiant. Now let the candidates for honorary degrees come forward. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, Norman Atkins. <laughs> Research, collaboration, discovery, and innovation these terms represent the heart of the Brown mission and the core concepts you have applied throughout your distinguished career in education. Your early work in journalism shined light on poverty and social issues plaguing our society and led to the founding of the Robin Hood Foundation to support family, social service, and after-school programs and Uncommon Schools, one of the nation's highest performing nonprofit charter management organizations. Later, Relay Graduate School of Education was created where through your guidance, teachers and school leaders discover and apply best practices to affect student learning and development, 
grounded in research, centered around lived and learned experiences. In recent years, you helped found other education organizations, including ZERN, a top-ranked digital math program serving millions of students. And through your leadership at Together Education, you can continue to affect me measurable and positive change. In celebrating a life of innovation in teaching and education, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters and all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree I give to you. In witness of this, I collegially, virtually give you this diploma. Gracias, TB. So much thanks to you, President Paxson, for your exemplary leadership and for this great honor. Thanks to, to the Brown Board of Fellows and Special thanks to the Annenberg Institute, the Nelson Center, and Brown Hill, RISD, and the entire Brown community. And I was reminded by a friend recently of the absolute dopiest thing that I did in all my years at Brown, which happened very early on. In September, as a freshman, I had the chance to go hear Bob Marley and the Whalers perform at Meehan Auditorium and foolishly missed it. And it was one of the last concerts before he died. And so I want to take this opportunity to thank my teachers and my classmates for singing redemptive songs of freedom for all the years that I was at Brown and for helping me understand that the purpose of education is freedom and that freedom is not finite but should always be expanding. And so I'm thinking today, may the souls of the great Brown education expanding leaders Horace Mann, Inman Page, John Hope, Ethel Robinson, be an inspiration to the class of 2021. And may you go through those Van Wickle gates, down the hill, and sing new songs of freedom and help make the world a better place. Thank you. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, Stephen Russell Jordan. Your accomplishments as a Brown student athlete and with the Minnesota Vikings of the National Football League have earned you a deserved place next to the legends of the gridiron. As an alumnus, you have spent decades supporting the university and displaying an undying belief in the transformative impact of a self-engineered Brown education. We're inspired by your dedication to your alma mater as a fellow and as a trustee of the Brown Corporation. You competed in an unforgiving sport that demanded the most of your body and mind. Now, as scientific discovery highlights the degenerative impacts of concussion and head trauma in contact sports, your willingness to donate your DNA to research has provided concrete samples to be studied to address the damaging effects of CTE on the brain. For your Hall of Fame athletic career, your commitment to the betterment of others, and your outstanding service to Brown, we are proud to award you with the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters and all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree I give to you. In witness of this, I collegially give you this diploma. Thank you, President Paxson and the Board of Fellows for giving me this honorary degree. It's greatly appreciated. I'd like to thank also the professors at Brown. They're all great. Two in particular I have to call out, which would be uh, Professor Morris and Professor Heller. They got me through chemistry and electromagnetic theory, and they were just particularly special for me. I also want to call out and, and thank my coaches at Brown. They were just awesome. The way they poured into me, uh, we had a confluence of some just great coaches, and we continue to have that. But by the time I got to the NFL, 
I was so far ahead of a lot of the other guys that came from these quote unquote football factories. It was amazing. So thank them for that. I also have to, of course, thank my parents who poured into me and made me the person that I am. The sacrifices that they made to, to get me to Brown um, was just tremendous. So I definitely have to thank Leon and Kathleen Jordan. I also would like to thank the corporation. Getting a chance to meet them and work with them over the years, the number of amazing people that I've met, it's been an honor, it's been a privilege to work with you. They continue to inspire me. So thanks again. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, David Brian Lobel. Our world is changing rapidly. The policy creators and decision makers in power will turn to your research to ensure that this world remains sustainable for generations. You serve as a preeminent voice in the field of food security and sustainability. And your work makes certain that Earth's lands and waters sustainably support the nutritional needs of a glo growing global population. The time is now for change, and our choices in this moment of time will determine the fate of our land. Your research and the data and policy created from that research and discovery supports the most disadvantaged people on this planet. Your peers in the growing legion of environmental scholars at Brown, at Stanford, and beyond are inspired by your efforts to support vulnerable people and places across the globe. For your dedication to our planet, for your influence on the field of environmental science, and for your research surrounding the human environment interactions that affect us all, we're proud to award you with the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science and all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree I give to you. In witness of this, I collegially give you this diploma. Thank you, President Paxson and the Board of Fellows for this incredible honor. I wanna thank all the faculty that I had the chance to interact with at my time at Brown. It's been maybe 20 years, but I, every year I, understand better and better how much they've influenced me and and how much I learned from them. Starting with Vartan Gregorian, who was the president when I began and inspired me in my first days, to Jack Mustard, who was my research advisor, gave me my first chance to get involved with research, gave me a lot of advice and encouragement, and really inspired me to embark on this career in research that I've had. So thank you to him and to the many others that really shaped my life. And to all of those who are graduating this year, congratulations and good luck. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, Maud S. Mandel. Respected scholar, educator, and inspirational leader, you've dedicated yourself to changing the landscape of higher education. For nearly 20 years, you shaped Brown's growth, first as professor, colleague, and mentor, and later as dean of the college. As steward of the undergraduate experience at Brown, you led the establishment of a program to strengthen student learning and core liberal arts competencies, you opened the doors of a center to support undocumented first-generation and low-income students, one of the first of its kind in the country, and you took learning beyond the classroom through an internship programming and networking platform. As president of Williams College, you imparted your vision early on, leading to a major initiative on free inquiry, expression, and inclusion, underscoring essential values in an environment where we learn and thrive. You constantly imagine and transform while preparing students for a bright future. For your efforts to create a dynamic learning environment, 
for advancing teaching and research and for your outstanding service to Brown, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters and all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree I give to you. In witness of this, I collegially and still virtually give you this diploma. <laughs> Thank you so much, President Paxson uh, and Board of Fellows for this honor today and really for the honor of being here. I'm really incredibly touched to receive an honorary degree from an institution where I learned so much myself. Uh, I, I was trained and educated at other institutions um, and I remember an advisor I had many, many years ago saying he learned more uh, from the place he worked for his career than he did where he was educated. I, I feel I learned a lot where I was educated, but I learned so much here at Brown from the faculty and administrators and staff I worked with, and also from the hundreds of students with whom I interacted here at Brown over so many years, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, and uh, in a sense, feel I myself am a product of the open curriculum, so thank you very much. Uh, President Paxson invited me to say just a couple of words today to the graduating class of 2021. So first, I just want to pause for a minute and say, congratulations, 2021. You look fantastic. It's so good to see you in person. I'm really happy to be here and to see you. I'm going to keep these remarks mercifully brief because we know that's the most important thing in a commencement speaker. But I did want to just say a couple of things. I had the good fortune to welcome you here four years ago. Some of you may remember that, some of you won't, when you came to College Hill. Um, and so it's particularly meaningful to be here today with this class as you start the next chapter of your adventure. We could not have predicted on the day you got here the journey that you have had a global pandemic, sweeping movements against racism and for equity and justice, political upheaval, fights to hold on to basic rights in voter access. You already have learned so much about what it means to be a grown-up. We heard about being a grown-up earlier today. You've learned a lot about what it means to be a grown-up long before many grown-ups ever learn it. And one of the things you've learned is that life can be incredibly unpredictable, that the path for those who thrive requires resilience, that you need to be open to changing course, learning while you're doing, assessing the evidence and regrouping. That's you. And I hope you really are proud of yourselves for what it took to get here. I always say that to graduates, but this year in particular, that you pat yourselves on the back for getting to this point. It's really amazing. So I, I hope you hold on to that resilience and that recognition that life is an open curriculum and that it will keep having these twists and turns and that you can use that basic skill as you go forward. A couple of other things I hope you take with you. Um, that I just wanted to mention today. I hope you will forgive yourself and others for being human. There's a lot out there we've heard about today to change, and we all have to do so much to lean in and work on those things. But remember, we all make mistakes and we're in this together. I hope you love with abandon. Find those people around you who've supported you to get here, the ones who you haven't met yet, and remember that the journey through is so, so much better if you give to them generously and take the opportunity to do so when it is presented to you. And I really hope you're always open to learning and to growing. What you know today is only a small piece of what you're ever going to know, and you're never gonna know very much. Everybody knows so much, and we all have to do this together and learn for each other. So remember that when you don't know something, it's not because you're ignorant, it's because you have an opportunity to learn from someone else who knows about that thing and who can teach you. So be open to that contribution. One piece of advice, just really specifically for today, thank the people who got you here. When you leave, your friends around you, 
your family, your family of friends, your family of family. Thank them all. Hug them hard. I hope you can hug them when you can. If it's not today, when you can get to them uh, and thank them for this. I really wish you all the best. I had tremendously high hopes for you when you got here. I have even higher hopes for you now. I've been watching you from afar. You are amazing. Congratulations. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, Jessica Ulrika Mir. You explore, discover, and inspire, and most importantly, you dream. You had an ideation for your future at an early age, and you followed those interstellar visions toward a path to the stars. Your dreams led you to Brown, and your self-created educational pathway guided you to the outer layers of our universe. Our nature is to search within and look above for answers. Your success has allowed us to gaze to the sky and know without a doubt that our dreams are possible. As one of NASA's Artemis program astronauts, you will take part in the new era of lunar exploration and could be, we hope, the first woman to walk on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> the discoveries from your expeditions will result in life-changing innovation in the likes of which we cannot imagine at this time. For inspiring a generation of Brunonians to follow their dreams, no matter how far from home they take us, we're proud to award you with the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science and all the rights and privileges pertaining to this degree I give to you. In witness of this, I collegially give you this diploma. Congratulations. Thank you, President Paxson. Thank you to the board fellows. It is truly an honor to be here today, and honestly a bit surreal, thinking that 22 years ago, I was sitting out here among all of the graduates, just like you are today. So many memories come flooding back from my remarkable four years here at Brown, where I first learned to think critically and conducted my very first scientific experiments and had a lot of fun along the way doing so. From my first year biology course with Ken Miller, to Swedish language classes, classes in Anne Weinstein's living room, observations of resident hawks attacking pigeons in downtown Providence for Jonathan Waggy's animal behavior seminars, and to my honors research with Dr. Herman Vandenberg, my professors and mentors fueled both my scientific and life curiosity, providing me with a foundation to launch my life's trajectory. Thanks to Professor Jim Head, I had the fortunate opportunity to even meet John Glenn and his wife Annie during my commencement weekend, standing right about here, I think it was, for that first time. The impact on my personal life was equally as extraordinary here at Brown. My randomly paired first year roommate remains my best friend to this day, and she and our two closest friends are here with me this weekend, making it even more special. <laughs> when I, <laughs> almost done. When I was here in your shoes, we were fortunate enough to have our families here, and my parents had a computer printed banner. I know that all of you are too young to remember this, but perhaps people on the stage remember that computer printed paper with the perforated holes that fed out of that printer. They were proudly, proudly carrying that banner, which read Space Girl. Thank you, President Paxson, and thank you to Brown University for bringing this space girl back to Brown once again. Congratulations to the graduates of 2021. If you can pull off air conditioning in the Ratty, we know there is no limit to your accomplishments. <laughs> Thank you.
Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, Ojeta Rogeri Thompson. You have devoted your life to public service as a defender of law and of liberty. You hold your office with authority and respect, and your courtroom is a place where every per party can expect to be heard fairly. Through your efforts to protect the rights of the underserved, you've ensured access to the highest quality legal representation. You are a trailblazer. As the first African-American woman appointed to Rhode Island's District Court, Rhode Island's Superior Court, and then to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. You've also shared your expertise, insight, and passion for this university through many years of service as a fellow and trustee of the Brown Corporation. For your contributions to advancing Brown's mission, your service to Rhode Island, and your dedication to justice and freedom, we honor you with the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. So by virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws and all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree I give to you. In witness of this, I collegially give you this diploma. So you're gonna get your degrees soon. That's a good thing, right? Yeah? Good morning. Good morning. I, I want to welcome you to this historic place on a glorious day. And these will be your last academic exercises as Brown undergraduates. In just a few short minutes, you'll formally be granted your degrees. And when you walk out through the Van Wickle gates, you will do so as alumni of the great Brown University class of 2021. Now, I have to say, presidential commencement addresses, sometimes they're too long, this one won't be, but they often follow a very predictable pattern. So, you know, the president arrives with a carefully prepared speech, graduates are praised for their accomplishments as students, this segues into a discussion about one or more of the pressing challenges facing society, climate change, racial injustice, and global health. And at the end, the graduating students are encouraged to go out into the world and use their knowledge to tackle these challenges and do good in the world. And then within days or weeks or months, they can't recall anything about the topic of the speech. Still, speeches like this are fine, and I've given that kind of speech myself, but I'm not gonna do that today. For one, you don't need me to tell you how much you've learned. And I've rarely met a Brown student who isn't passionate about using their knowledge to make the world a better place. You know these things, and you have everything you need to go out and do that. Second, it feels inappropriate to do the predictable thing in a year that was anything but predictable. This was a year when all of the scripts that we used to guide our lives just flew out the window, disappeared. And the truth is, it's frightening when you don't have a script, when our world shifts unexpectedly and all of the usual patterns and ways of doing things are disrupted, they're upended. And when this happens, it's natural to want to go back to what's familiar and safe. It's normal to yearn for normal. For my part, a normal academic year is entirely predictable. Students arrive over Labor Day weekend. Family weekend and football games are in October. The MLK lecture is in February. Student protests, which I wholeheartedly respect truly, are usually in April. And commencement falls on Memorial Day weekend. And this is the script that usually governs my life. And I expect that before the pandemic, you had a vision of how your senior years would play out. Although each of your visions would have been unique, I bet that most of you expected your senior spring to be your best semester at Brown, a time to wrap up your courses and honors theses, but also a time to have fun, spend time with your best friends, have a blast at campus dance before marching out through the Van Wickle gates. 
Then the pandemic came, and like I said, the script flew out the window. And over the past 14 months, you've lived with incredible uncertainty, not only about how the pandemic would play out, but also about basic aspects of your daily lives. Where'd you, where would you be living and when? How you'd be learning? How to ensure the safety of your families? And the people and institutions you usually count on to provide guidance in uncertain times, your families, your university, your political leaders, were just as unsure about what to do next as you may have been. In some cases, leading voices were actively spreading misinformation. And so, without a script, you adapted. You shifted your perspectives. And I have to say, through all this, you have been so extraordinary. I am so impressed about how you navigated the past 14 months. You had to abruptly leave campus last March and shift to remote courses, and you continued to learn. You supported your friends. You followed new public health rules to keep our community and the greater Providence community safe. You advocated for what you needed and what others needed too. And you stood up for equity and justice. You defied the common belief that college students would be super spreaders of the virus. And it's because of your efforts that we're all here today. We couldn't have done it without you, and I want to thank you for that. Without a script to follow, you've been forced to know yourself better and understand your own strengths and your weaknesses and hone your values. And when you've had to make decisions with very little information to go on, instead of asking yourself, what am I expected to do? Because who knows in a pandemic, you've had to ask, what's the right thing for me to do? Now, this is far from the last time that you'll be uncomfortable. You will face uncertainty in the future. Hopefully not pandemic level uncertainty, but uncertainty nonetheless. So sometimes things won't turn out the way you expected, like when the job you thought you'd love, you discover that you hate, or when the demands of juggling work and family life necessitate that you shift course, like move to a new city or make a career change. You'll make important decisions knowing that in hindsight, they may prove to be great choices or very bad mistakes. The truth is that in the decades ahead, you will continuously write and rewrite the scripts of your own lives. And it's really important to remember that this is yours and yours alone to do. Never let anyone impose a plan on you that's not of your own making. Never let some preconceived notion of what you're expected to do drive your decisions. And I have to say, you, you have got this. You are so well prepared to write your own scripts in the most glorious ways possible. Through your experience with the open curriculum, which Dean Mandel, now President Williams, uh, mentioned, you've learned how to learn. Knowing how to learn and changing in uncircum circumstances is one of the most valuable things that you will take away from Brown. And through the course of this year, you have further honed the very important qualities of character and compassion that will serve you so well in the future. So as I look out at all of you today, I can say with complete confidence that you are ready to take on the world and as you remember Brown, as you leave Brown, please remember that we're proud of you. We love you. We wish each and every one of you full lives of meaning and purpose. And now would you like me to read the Latin script that confers your degrees? So before we present the degrees, we have one more uh, sad thing to do. And, and I ask that you all join me in recognizing students Maximilian Y. Lanai, whose life was tragically cut short. He was a distinguished and honored member of this university, and he will always live in our hearts. Madam President, I have the honor to present the baccalaureate degree candidates.
So ki honorandi, uenos gratum, quos ha gratum baccalaurei, honor colleagues, and I'm asking a representative fellow this question because they have to give permission to give you your degrees. Honor colleagues, we present these young people whom we have found fit for the bachelor's degree, and we ask that we per be permitted to advance them to this degree. Leak it at placket. Okay, for those of you who didn't take Latin, that means yes, we're allowed to go forward. That's a really good thing. Candidoti agradum baccalaurei escundant. Candidates for the bachelor's degree, please stand up. Autoritati mihi camisa vos agradum baccalaurei admito, omniaqua jura ac privilegia adhungradum pertinentia vobis concidu. By the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the bachelor's degree, and I grant to you all rights and privileges pertaining to this degree. Congratulations, you now move your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard. for just one more minute, I'm, I'm going to introduce our Chancellor, Sam Menkoff, who will introduce a, a brief video. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all. I'm Sam Menkoff, Chancellor of our great university, and it is my pleasure to introduce the Expressions of Joy video created by graduating seniors, graduate students, and medical students celebrating their graduations and reflecting on their time at Brown. Let's all enjoy it together. Class of 2021, we made it. It was tough and we made it through this. If we can do this, we're gonna do great things. So don't even worry about it. The distance wasn't really felt. And I think that's really what brought me joy. Uh, just still being in touch with all these very amazing people I met at Brown. Community is not limited by geography. And so we are in this together. Every week I would have a game night where I would run a Dungeons and Dragons game to start the new week off strong because that's what you need. You need these little human moments that kind of keep you going. We all have to be there for one another when so many things are changing and we're kind of like unsure about what's next. So I think in a way this has made our friendships a lot stronger. We were really all just with each other 24 hours a day and we got really, really close. And I'm super thankful for that group of friends. So shout out Noah, Phil, Tim and Gracie, Flynn. You guys are all awesome. So concentrating in ethnic studies has been such a transformative experience. Um, and this sounds very cliche for me to say, but it really has taught me how to love myself. And I think that's especially because I've learned so much about histories that relate to me and my personal experiences as a black woman. Thank you to Chaplain Janet Cooper Nelson for being a wonderful mentor, um, an unending source of wisdom for me. Huge shout out to Hillel, the Center for Jewish Life on campus that has a, been a huge support for me during my time here. All of the amazing people I've met from different backgrounds, different countries, political orientations, different racial and ethnic backgrounds, etc that you can only find in a place like Brown is incredible. Being able to cook authentic Vietnamese food with friends, but also learn about other people's cultures while we're cooking together. Those are the experiences that I'll bring with me once I leave Brown. Shout out dining services, giving that love through food and seeing us and sustaining us. Brown took care of us as a lifespan, considering us healthcare workers and making sure that as we went out there and helped fight the pandemic, even in a learner's capacity that we were taken care of and that we were thought of as members of the team. To the rugby boys, love the boys, love the sand, love grinding it with Dave, what a coach. I would just say keep going for it boys, we have a good group of committed lads. I would like to shout out Brown Women's Lacrosse and the Doghouse. <laughs> a shout out to Bluno, I miss you. <laughs> Garrett, Ryan, Mako, Zanab, Kylie, Carlin and Clara, I love you guys. You guys are the best and you just made my year. 
small moments like today uh, where there's uh, a lot of people on the main green and I'm able to come and connect with my friends and free, get free ice cream. <laughs> One of my friends and I have a standing appointment every Friday night to have pasta and watch a movie together. And that's been really, really important uh, to just spend that time. Very intentional, cute Zoom calls that I've had um, specifically with the Ufly Cuties of Color, which is the undocumented first gen, low income, queer, trans, people of color Zoom. Brown has taught me a lot about how important it is to be nice and be accepting to the people around you. I think that's going to be useful, especially in the world we're living in now. One of the greatest joys I had in this challenging year was planning a series of 15 extraordinary speaker events with the Fashion Brown team to spread some inspiration and community around campus and even around the world. The knowledge that we gain here, we can and should translate into service. Seeing how our community of EMTs has come together and changed what we do so much to support the campus. Kingsley, Blessing, Ray, um, Robbie, Evan, I love y'all till I die. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever you are in the world, so besides English, I only know how to say it in my native French, but félicitations, uh, félicitations. Uh, congratulations, everyone. Cherish what you have at the moment and just enjoy what life has to offer to you. Life is too precious to spend time doing things we don't enjoy. So spend time with those who you love, tell them you love them, and spend time doing the things that you love to do. Congratulations, you did it. to join me in recognizing some really special people. So first, let's recognize the graduating seniors who are participating virtually. Tell them we miss them and ask the in-person audience. Let's all applaud them. Come on. Let's recognize all of our families and friends who are participating virtually. Clap as hard as you can to thank them for everything that you've done, they've done for you. Please join me in recognizing the 50th and 25th reunion alums who will be leading the recessional through the Van Winkle Gates. Ellie Hirschfield, class of 1971, and Mark Tracy, class of 1995. And now I'd ask you to please stand and join me in singing the alma mater. I'm sure you all have the words memorized, right? Come on. Alma mater, we hail thee with royal devotion and bring to thy altar our offerings of praise. Our hearts swell within us with joyful emotion as the name of old crown in loud chorus we raise. The happiest moments of youth's fleeting hours we pass neath the shade of these time-honored walls and souls. As transient as April's brief showers have crowded our lives in Brunonia's halls. And a final congratulations to the class, the great class of 2021. We are going to recess now and we'll see you as you march through the gates. Congratulations.
Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, please remain in your spots until an usher dismisses you to walk to the Van Wickel gates, and congratulations.